Today I'm going to show you how to design and draft a reversible tote bag so you can use any two pieces of fabric you have to create one. So you're going to get two bags in one. This is part of our scrap busting series where we show you how to take your leftover scraps of fabric and make projects that are both beautiful and useful. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a scrap busting video. First you need to create your pattern. So let's talk about the size that you need to cut. And you can reference your favorite tote bag that you have already if you want. First, decide how big you want your box bottom to be. So in this case, the box bottom is six inches. Next, decide how tall you want your bag to be. So on this bag, the finished dimension here is 17 inches. Next, take the width of that box bottom, so that's six inches in this case, divide it by two, that brings us to three inches, and add it to that height measurement. So that means you got 20 inches. Next, you wanna add seam allowance. So add 5 8 inch seam allowance on each side. So now my total length measurement is 21 and a quarter inches. Next decide how wide you want your bag to be. So the finished measurement on this bag is 21 inches. Add seam allowances to each side. So 5 8 on each side. So that brings us to 22 and a quarter inches. That's going to be the width of your rectangle, 22 and a quarter inches. Remember you can use any measurements you want for this just depending on what size bag you want or how much fabric you have. For the handles, you can make them as long or as short as you want. So you can just drape a tape measure over your shoulder to determine how long you want it to be, or you can measure a favorite tote bag that you already have. Just be sure to add 5 8 inch seam allowance to each side. For me, I cut out two handles that are 3 inches wide and 27 inches long, which includes seam allowance. Or if you don't feel like doing all that math, the Ollie pattern from Seamwork is all set up for you, and it comes with two additional bags, two drawstring protist bags, a big one and a small one. So now I've cut out my two rectangles. I've got Two rectangles cut out from my outer shell fabric, which is really pretty brown and white fabric from Blackbird Fabrics that I absolutely love. I've cut out two handles and I've cut out two rectangles for the lining, which is this beautiful blue linen. Now the fabric I'm using is quite stiff and stable, but if you're using a lighter weight fabric and you wanna make sure that your bag is very structured and very stable, you can always add interfacing to your outer shell. Another option, if you don't wanna cut out handles from your fabric or you just prefer the look, or you don't have enough fabric, you can use purchased webbing instead of handles from your fabric. Webbing like this is really strong, it's really sturdy, and it comes in a whole bunch of different colors. And if you wanna get extra scrappy and you have a lot of little leftover pieces of fabric that you wanna use up, you can even make a patchwork bag. And if you wanna learn how to do that, check out video number one in this series, which we'll link to below. Now you need to cut out your box corners. So cut a square at the bottom of each of your pieces of the shell fabric and the lining fabric. So if you remember, we wanted a six inch finished bottom width. So we're gonna cut out a three inch by three inch square. So just take whatever width you want the bottom of the bag to be, divide it by two, and that'll be both the width and length of the square that you wanna cut out. So now all four pieces have two squares cut out from the bottom. On your outer shell pieces with right sides together, sew the side seams and the bottom seam. Next on your lining pieces, do the same thing with right sides together, sew the side seams and the bottom, but leave a four inch gap along the very bottom. There's no need to finish your seam allowances because the bag is lined and reversible, but you do need to press your seam allowances open at this point. Okay, so now we're gonna box the bottom. And to do that, all you need to do is bring the side seam to meet the bottom seam like this. Make sure the raw edges are aligned and pin in place. Once you've got it pinned, sew across the seam at 5 8 inch. Repeat that process on the second corner and then on the two corners on the lining. All right, now our corners are boxed and it's time to make the straps. So I'm gonna show you a really, really easy way to make straps that doesn't involve any turning. So to start, fold your strap in half lengthwise and press. After you've pressed that fold down the middle, open the piece up with wrong sides together, fold 
those long edges in so that they meet right at the fold that you just pressed. Once you've done that, you can fold again and you've got all your raw edges encased and you're ready to press. Once you've got it pressed, edge stitch along both long edges. Once you've edge stitched, give it a final press just to set the stitches. Now we're gonna sew the straps to the shell. So we're gonna start by turning our shell right side out. Pin the straps to the shell right side together. You can put these wherever you want, usually a few inches from each side. Just make sure they're the same on both sides. And make sure that your straps aren't twisted when you pin it to the bag. Then flip it over and pin the second strap to the second side. Now machine baste each strap to the bag. So now we're going to stitch the shell to the lining along the top seam. So to do that, insert the shell into the lining with right sides together. Make sure that your straps are tucked inside between the two layers and then line up your side seams so that they match. Once you've done that, pin in place all along the top. Now stitch in one continuous circle all along the top. All right, we're almost done. So now you're gonna reach in that hole you left in the bottom of your lining and you're gonna turn the whole thing out. So now we're gonna close up that hole that we left in the bottom of the bag and you can do this in a few ways. You can slip stitch by hand if you want to. Uh, what I usually do is just edge stitch along the top to close it since it's in the middle of the lining on the inside of the bag, nobody's gonna see it and that's gonna be the sturdiest option for you. Okay, we're just about done. So then all you need to do is flip the lining back to the inside, press along this top seam, and then you can add any top stitching or edge stitching that you want. So for my bag, I'm gonna edge stitch along the top and then I'm gonna sew another line of top stitching about an inch down. Do you like easy DIY projects like this? If so, let us know in the comments and maybe we can create some more for you. If you want access to easy patterns like the Ollie tote, be sure to check out a Seamwork membership. When you join, you get access to our entire catalog of over 200 modern sewing patterns, from quick and easy tops to wear anywhere dresses to tailored blazers and pants. We help you to design and craft your own wardrobe. Membership also gets you access to Design Your Wardrobe, our popular course that walks you through a process for laying out a seasonal wardrobe that you can sew. Plus, membership includes our library of dozens of sew along classes. And best of all, access to our private sewing community, including tens of thousands of members, where you can post projects, ask questions, and even find sewing friends near you. I hang out there all the time along with Haley and the rest of the team here at Seamwork, and I'd love for you to join me. YouTube subscribers get half off a Seamwork membership, making it an incredibly good deal. To sign up, just click the button on screen or the link in the description below to claim your offer. I hope you loved this video, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.